Do you want to get a ton of diamonds quickly in your Minecraft worlds? Well, this is the video for you. I have all the best tips and tricks to make your mining sessions way more profitable, and I'll even be telling you a bunch of stuff that you might be doing wrong. There are literally so many diamonds right underneath your feet that you are completely walking by and missing on your mining sessions that you could be getting, and I'll be showing you how to do that in today's video. This video is for Minecraft Bedrock and Java Edition, but there was just recently some updates to Bedrock that make mining even more profitable now. Bedrock Edition just recently got the crawling update and diamond generation has also been increased on Bedrock Edition so now is the best time to go mining. Let's go over some beginner methods for getting diamonds first and then I'll show you the better methods and then the more technical stuff at the end of the video. The first thing that you need to know about finding diamonds in Minecraft is that they pretty much only generate at the deep slate levels meaning you're gonna have to go into that spooky cave and go all the way down to the bottom layers of the world. If you're going into to the spooky cave, prepare to fight mobs. Overall, finding a cave that goes all the way down or even to deep slate is gonna be kind of rare, so you're gonna wanna just dig straight down. Now, there's two ways of digging straight down. There's the quick way, and then there's the smart way. The quick way is literally just digging straight down in a hole like this, and this will probably end you up in lava. The smart way is digging down a two-block hole and standing between the blocks. That way, you can see what's beneath you, but you're also standing on something safe. This will save your life is more times than not bring some ladders with you that way you can more easily get out or save the blocks that way you can pillar back out as you're digging down if you find a giant cave underneath you you're gonna want to bring yourself a water bucket place that down that way you can more easily get into your cave and you can also get out using this water as well on your way down if you hit a cave definitely explore it because caving is the best way to get some early diamonds to make your first diamond pickaxe as you can see you're pretty likely to find some diamonds in a cave but you're not that likely to find a lot of diamonds in a cave. Like this one, you're probably only going to get a couple of diamond ore. If you find a huge cave, these ones are definitely worth exploring, but you're going to want some night vision potions. That way you can more easily spot the diamond. There's two patches of diamonds over there. We got ourselves a bunch of other valuable ores in the walls. So bringing a night vision for these super massive caves will definitely be worth your time because then you could just go spot all the diamonds immediately. Like there's actually a bunch down here. Bam, there's another one. There's another two. Generally, you're only going to find one diamond ore. You'll be lucky if you get more than one diamond ore from these exposed diamonds and caves, but it is a decent way to get a couple of early game diamonds for your first set of diamond gear. This can also be very dangerous and difficult to sell. Maybe not the best thing to do. Oops. So that's your early game diamonds covered, but we're not here for just early game. We want to get the maximum amount of diamonds that we can. So for this, we're going all the way down to bedrock. Once you've dug all the way down to bedrock, you want to set up a little central base camp area, get yourself a chest because you're going to be getting a lot of blocks, and you also want a crafting table or several, that way you can compact down your ores. Now, we're not going to be mining at bedrock layer, that's Y-60. We're going to be mining a couple layers above that at Y-58. This is where diamonds are the most plentiful. If you're going to be doing this type of mining, you definitely want to get yourself some enchantments. Don't be doing this with a regular iron pickaxe, it's going to be a extremely slow and you're gonna hate it. I would recommend at least a diamond pickaxe. You're gonna want fortune three, obviously. You're gonna want efficiency five. And I would also recommend getting mending. That way every ore that you break helps you repair your pickaxe. You're also gonna need a shovel, an ax, a little bit of wood and coal for torches, or night breathing, and of course you need a water bucket, food, and trapdoors. If you're having a hard time getting enchantments in your world, then check out my videos on villager trades and how to get the best enchantments in the game. Links are down below. The typical way of mining is to just pick a direction and then mine a too high branch mine, just going out, but as you can see, this is pretty slow. You gotta constantly, like, you know, press forward a little bit, stop to place down your torches, and it's not really, you know, that great. Now, what is much faster is to do the dive mining method. So put down yourself a trapdoor, flick that, and now we can go significantly faster. Of course, for this, you will need your Swift Sneak 2 or 3 pants, but once we put those on, then we can just zip forward. Here's a little bedrock exclusive trick for you. If you have the block at the very end of your reach, you'll actually mine 
mine faster. So this allows you to instant mine Deep Slate. As you can see, we can just walk forwards and all of this gets mined instantly. There's no stop and go. There's no pain and suffering. As you can see, if the block is closer to us, then it doesn't quite instant mine. It has to be at the very end of our reach. And then you just hold down the button and you can instant mine the Deep Slate. Another trick you probably didn't know about is you can actually run while crawling. This is the regular crawling speed. If we just hit the run button, then we go significantly faster. It is actually faster, and I think this might be a Bedrock exclusive. So there's a couple of basic tricks to this. I would recommend putting the trapdoor on the side so that it flips up and down like this. I'll explain more about that later, but now we can just get on in here and mine to our heart's desire. If you turn up your brightness, you'll actually be able to see a lot more ahead of you, and then you won't even need to worry about placing down torches. If you're planning on not using torches, then you're probably going to want night vision or maybe an ultra bright texture pack or something like that. And there we go. We found our first bit of diamonds. And now mining this stuff out is pretty easy. If it's in the floor or something, you can simply mine it out, not needing to worry about lava or anything like that. And then if you just place down some blocks in there, that's actually going to push all the items up towards you. And we got more diamonds. There's just a few blocks after that. As you can see, this is a pretty quick method and it works incredibly well. And if you have ores in the ceiling, then again, you can just mine those out, but you want to avoid standing up. So then fill the ceiling back in once you're done. If you stand up during any of this, then you'll have to place down another trapdoor, and it's just a little bit annoying. This is also a remarkably safe mining strategy, because nothing can spawn on these one tall tunnels, so you don't even need to light them up, and unless you're mining through a deep dark or an ancient city, the only thing that can hurt you down here is a warden. So what if you've reached the end of where you want to mine? Well, then just stand back up, and then you can actually mine all of this back out on your way back. This allows you to reveal a ton more blocks on the way back and you're gonna have to walk back to your base camp anyway so you may as well get all those extra blocks revealed and at the end of your tunnel you don't even need to break your trapdoor because it is sideways so it's not gonna block you in there from just this one tunnel we already got 27 diamonds i would highly recommend that you mine out all the redstone and lapis that you find because that's going to give you a significant amount of experience which will help you repair your pickaxe now what about when you hit lava obviously this can be frightening but if you just dig down a block in front of you it's always going to flow into that and it won't be able to reach you but for this i'd recommend it just going over it so mine out a couple blocks going up but now we can just pillar up by six or seven blocks and then mine forwards and we'll just go right over that lava lake as you can see we're totally safe up here nothing to worry about once you get back down to y negative 58 just place down yourself another trap door and you can continue on your way without even having to worry about that lava lake to give you some data on why y negative 58 is the best layer to mine at here's a little graph of the diamond ore distribution and as you can see y level 58 has quite a bit. By mining out Y-58, you're revealing all the diamonds that would generate at this layer. You're also going to be finding diamonds that generate below you. You're also going to be revealing diamonds that generate above you as well. So overall, this is the best layer to mine at for getting a ton of diamonds. If you do decide to mine out Y-57, then you're also going to be revealing extra diamonds that could be in the walls here, and of course, some extra diamonds in the ceiling. It might not be as efficient, but you need to walk back to base camp anyway, so you may as well. I went ahead and excavated a huge area just so you can see what the ore distribution actually looks like. And if you wanted to get all of these, you quite literally would have to bomb out the entire area with a tunnel bore or manually mine it out. Unless you're using an x-ray pack or you're just a mad lad, then you're not going to be getting all these diamonds. However, we can optimize our mining to get a lot of them. If you want to get technical with your mining, I'd recommend making a tunnel going forwards every eight blocks. So basically, there's going to be a seven block gap between between your tunnels and if you start this on a chunk border then every other tunnel that you make is also going to be on a chunk border as well if you're really trying to get the maximum amount of diamonds from an area then make your first little micro tunnel and then dig out branches to either side of you as far as you can mine and that's going to reveal a lot of extra blocks in all of these areas and then we're going to skip three blocks and make another branch mine on either side of us and then just repeat that process 
process going down the line. However, as you can see, this is quite slow and it requires counting and overall, I don't find this to be worth it. I'd rather make these tunnels a lot longer or just make more of them because that's a lot faster. So if you're a diamond completionist, then make one of these tunnels every eight blocks. So seven blocks in between them. And then every other one of these tunnels should also have branches on them. That way you reveal the maximum number of blocks for the minimum amount of mining. That might have been hard to visualize. So I've mapped out what your tunnels would end up looking like. So this is a tunnel with branches on it going all the way through. Any ores that are touching these iron blocks are ores that you would get revealed from mining. And then we could do one of those every 16 blocks and that would reveal the vast majority of the ores. If you wanted to, you could put another tunnel right in between them. So the eighth block, but as you can see, there isn't really that much space between these that would get revealed. So if you're planning on doing the branches, you could skip these little ones, but if you aren't going to be doing the branches, then you definitely want to do tunnels at least every eight blocks, and that's going to get you quite a few ores. Now, of course, there is a little bit of space in this design where you could, like, miss some diamonds, but it's pretty unlikely, and we're here to optimize our mining strategy, so of course, you could reveal more, but but you'd have to mine more. For Bedrock Edition, I can't tell if chunk borders are actually beneficial to mine on for getting more diamond ore. The old saying goes that diamond ore is more likely to generate on chunk borders because you can have one set of diamond ore right here and then another set of diamond ore right here. And this certainly does happen, but I don't know if it's worth it to actually worry about it. Mining on chunk borders certainly doesn't hurt though, so feel free to keep mining on them if that's what you'd like to do. If you learned something from this video, then drop a like and share it around and subscribe to help us reach 600,000. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys down in the comments and in the next one.